Hey guys, what's up? So, can the cheapest boost pedal that you can buy on Amazon actually hang with some of the more boutique overdrives? Let's check it out. So what I got today is a $20 boost pedal that you can buy off Amazon. It's branded as an iSet pedal. It's called the Dual Katana. It's one of the cheapest looking boost pedals that you can find on Amazon, but interestingly enough, it has quite a bit of tonal control. So today I just want to kind of go through and see if it can even hang with a more expensive pedal like the Boss SD-1, which is kind of a mid-price point, still pretty budget friendly. And then the uh, Fortin Tempest, which is kind of touted as a boutique version of a much more complex circuit and, you know, costs a bit more. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of run the pedal through the clean channel of this single rectifier just to see if it can really do even just like the most basic boost overdrive tone. So here's my clean tone. And so here's the boost pedal on with everything kind of up in the middle. Seems to be a symmetrical clipping circuit, uh, kind of like a tube screamer. There's really not a lot of information online about this pedal, so a lot of it I kind of had to suss out on my own. Uh, so it obviously drops the volume down a bit. Let me bump the volume. Okay, it's not bad. Um, the gain's kind of in the middle. Let me bump the gain. Let me turn the bass down a little bit. That really cuts the bass. If I bump the bass. Bump the treble. If I turn the gain all the way up. Definitely an overdrive, not a distortion, and it's not really that um, hard clipping of an overdrive. Obviously, if it's a tube screamer, it's going to be a soft clipping overdrive. And, you know, these tone controls, they're pretty dynamic. Decent range of volume on it. It doesn't sound bad. I mean, let's just put it that way. For just a regular uh, kind of gritty overdrive, it's not bad. The one thing I will say listening to it is it's pretty flat in the mids. Like, it doesn't really have that, like, meaty sparkle that some of these other Tube Screamer style circuits kind of give you. One of the things that's kind of missing here is that mid bump. Maybe this is just more supposed to be a clean boost with a little bit of a, of a clipping circuit kind of built in. Either way, it's not terrible. If I move on to something like the SD-1. That's an asymmetrical circuit. That is um, giving you kind of more of like a mix of a dirty tone and, a, and kind of an unprocessed tone. Usually I like to run these with the drive a little bit up and if I'm running it kind of like a regular overdrive, I'm usually keeping the tone kind of in the middle. Yeah, that's cool. Um, the Tempest, I don't believe to be an actual... Uh, Asymmetrical symmetrical clipping circuit. I do think it might be an LED circuit. I'd have to relook that up. Uh, if it is a soft clipping circuit, it's definitely symmetrical, not asymmetrical. It's definitely the more saturated of the bunch here. It is the most expensive and it has a circuit that, you know, has a high pass, low pass filter. I kind of feel like the bass and treble controls on this cheap pedal are just kind of uh, a cut boost kind of thing. These actually seem to be kind of high pass, low pass, not just boost cut. 
So I'm gonna quickly set them up like I normally would any kind of boost pedal that I'm running into the front of a high gain amp, and then we'll see what they kind of do uh, compared to each other. Okay, so now I'm onto the red channel of the single rectifier. Here's what my tone is without any kind of overdrive or boost. <laughs> So pretty saturated, but you know, still got quite a big round low end bottom. I do find that the single rectifier is much easier to dial in than any of its uh, dual or triple counterparts. Um, the gain and the EQ just seem to be a lot tighter. So I'm gonna start off with the cheap boost pedal and I have these all kind of set up how I'd typically run them in front of this amp. <laughs> So with it off, so on it I had the volume all the way up. I do actually have the gain just pulled up a little bit because it is a pretty clean kind of circuit. And I have the bass pulled back a little bit, the treble up. Might pull the treble back a little bit. With the bass cut all the way down, very tight sounding with it off. So for this amp, I probably might even keep that bass control completely pulled all the way back. Really tightens it up. If you turn the treble all the way up, Kind of clangy, kind of get a little bit more sympathetic uh, ring out from the strings on this guitar. It's a little bit too much, probably bring it back just a little bit. The gain, let me turn the gain all the way down. With the gain all the way down, it kind of flattens out the mid-range in a way that I don't like, so I'm going to pull up the gain just a little bit on here. A little harder to get the pinch harmonics out of uh, this amp with this boost on. It's not quite as friendly to that uh, those overtones. There you go. Um, maybe pull the treble back a little bit, uh, bass up. Gain, if I turn it up more. I mean, pulling the gain up does help some of those harmonic uh, frequencies come through a little bit better, but it also makes the bass a little bit more unruly, kind of thuddy. So keep the um, gain down. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I like that. That's not bad. So that's about as good as I can get that pedal. Let's move on to the SD1. So the SD1, level up, gain down, tone all the way up. getting the harmonic out of that too maybe it's how i have the amp set um let me turn the trouble up a little bit mids back a little bit presence back <laughs> There's a reason why the SD1 just is like the goat of all boost pedals. 
Um, so I think I like that a lot. I don't have the tone completely all the way up on it. Scaled it back just a little bit. If you, you know, pull the tone all the way up. It's just a great sounding pedal. So moving on to the Tempest. What I have is the drive all the way down, the volume all the way up. I have the low pass filter a little bit past noon and the high pass filter a little bit more past noon. So basically I'm letting some of the high frequencies in and then I'm cutting out quite a bit of the low. By far the easiest uh, pedal to get the harmonics to come through. Um, if I totally cut out the, the low end. Without it. don't think that for $20 that that little boost pedal is terrible at all. In fact, I think if anything, it sort of hangs pretty well for its price point with these pedals. I will say that on this board out of all of them, the Tempest is still probably my favorite one to run in front of this amp, especially in this moment. It just has the most mid-range kind of um, texture that I like. And then the Boss SD1 is probably the most bang for your buck still at 60 bucks coming through with like a really nice mid-range kind of bite and just enough saturation to kind of get you over the hump. The one thing I will say about the cheap pedal is there is just kind of this real flat kind of dead response in the mid-range that kind of comes through when you have it activated. Almost like you have a slight blanket over the whole mid-range tone. Now, for $20, and if you have an already decent amplifier, you're probably not going to be, you know, too mad about it. But if you're running kind of a cheaper kind of solid state amp, you might find yourself struggling with this pedal just a little bit. Um, but, you know, at the price point, you still probably will get a pretty decent usable tone, especially if you're just trying to get your, you know, feet wet into the world of boost pedals. Uh, the other thing to mention uh, regarding pedals like this is when you hold it in your hand, it's a decent kind of cast metal shell. The button is, you know, a latching button and it feels a little stiff. Uh, the knobs are pretty kind of run of the mill, cheap knobs. Uh, these little mini knobs, they're. They're cool, but they do fail over time. Even on good pedals, they can tend to be a little bit um, unreliable. The Boss SD-1 is a tank. If you buy this, you'll never, ever even have to worry about it. The one thing about Boss pedals that are kind of wonky is sometimes over time, the spring mechanism inside the foot switch can get a little worn out. Uh, I've had a couple pedals basically break that way. The Fortin... Tempest or any kind of like higher end pedal, you know, that you're paying kind of more of a premium for. For instance, the foot switch on this thing is like, it's so just like super light to the touch. I mean, it latches, but it takes like no effort. There's no struggle, nothing. It feels really good. The knobs on this feel phenomenally good. There's no scratchiness, there's no weirdness. With this little pedal here, you'll notice that as it kind of gets you know, battered around a little bit, you'll start to hear little um, little crackles uh, that kind of form uh, just kind of randomly. Seems to be par for the course for cheap pedals. Uh, and beyond that, you're only paying 20 bucks. So take it for what you will. 
I was just curious because I kind of I, I bought this as kind of like a volume boost to use in the loop of one of my amps and it worked really well for that but I ended up not needing it anymore and so I was like what the hell let me see if this can even like work as a decent overdrive and it seems to work just fine as a decent overdrive I've heard more expensive pedals that sound worse than this one so take that for what you will anyway I thought some of the viewership that you know are really into sort of the budget gear stuff would appreciate looking at this so if you're on Amazon this is the iset uh, I think it's called the double katana it has two swords it's black it looks pretty cool on the board and you know it's definitely worth 20 bucks just to have as an extra boost pedal especially if you have something more expensive that ends up failing you this will slot right in uh, in a pinch so anyway that's my spiel later <laughs>